So the food truck will be operating on campus. So we only took in consideration businesses that serve people on campus, whether if they are located on campus or outside of it. So there's another food truck operating on campus. It's called The Street. There's Cramlet at the library. There's Denny's on Northside. There are vending machines all around campus. Uh, there are some delivery options like Jimmy John's and pizza. And there are also food carts outside of the hospitals and the museums. So most of the places listed on our competition list are operating during the day and in places that are not very convenient to get to. Like for example, Cromelot at the library serves only people who are actually studying at the library. And students who, for example, live on South Side will most likely not walk in the middle of the night to the library just to get a little snack from the Cromelot. Another example is Jimmy John's that yes, it's very convenient, it does deliver all the way to campus, but it doesn't deliver past 2 a.m. And believe it or not, there are some students, and most of us are, uh, studying after 2 a.m. So all of these businesses could be considered as competition, but we still believe that the food truck is somewhat different and has advantages. So, it's going to be operating at previously unoccupied hours. The food truck will be operating past 2 a.m. and very early in the morning, like at 7.30, before people have their 8.30 class or before people have their 9.30 class. It'll be very convenient or in the middle of the night when people are studying. So it will be very convenient with the hours. It's also going to be traveling around campus to places like the village, the freshman dorms, the library, and to a limited extent based on student requests to maybe some more places. It's going to have healthy food options, which is always great, and especially when eating at that time in the middle of the night, healthy food is much better than non-healthy food. And it's going to reduce the chance of danger to the students by limiting their distance and they may be walking. So people at the village can just go down, downstairs and go to the food truck, grab a snack, maybe stand for a couple of minutes with their friends, chat, and then come back and study. So they don't have to walk and they don't have to think, oh, where are we going to find food at such a time? Um, even though there's advantages, there are always some disadvantages for everything. So we think that the disadvantages of the food truck um, is that, that some students may not be interested in eating healthy foods at night. Some students may want more greasy food that will be more fulfilling at that time. Also, labor at this time of the day is a little difficult for some people and especially for those students who will be working and operating the food truck. If they have morning classes, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to stay up at, at that time in the middle of the night and then going to class in the morning. But there's also lots of opportunities for this food truck. It will be convenient to take the food that was left over from Leutner and Fribley and grab it and sell it later in the day on the food truck. Uh, this way the food will not go to waste and we can go green and food, recycle the food. And also, uh, for example, like the sandwiches they will sell at grab it. If there are some leftovers, they can sell it at the food truck at night or in Fribley or Leutner, if there's any vegetables left over, they can create salads or sandwiches as well and just create snacks like that and not waste food because also we, the food truck will have an advisor for bon, from Bon Appetit, the students who are going to work. The food truck will be operated by Case Western students, preferably nutrition majors that are actually interested in conducting research with the truck and there's going to give them employment opportunity, research opportunities too, and it was, it's going to be a great way to learn. And it's going to be also useful during campus events. So the food truck can be available for Greek life events or RHA events or Relay for Life. Just There's lots of events on campus and with a request the food truck will be available for that. After all, the food truck could also inspire other universities to have food trucks and have safer and healthier environment for their students. Every university wants 
a healthy environment and safe environment for their students. Every parents want that for their kids and this would be a great idea. At Case Bites, our mission will be to provide di a diverse and satisfying eating experience for the Case Western Reserve University student through late night and early morning dining at our campus-wide food truck. And for the product, our main product will be the food that we're selling. So we're hoping to create um, a range of comfort food, healthy food, and also to have um, a standard quality of food and to consistently be producing food that is satisfying the student. Um, we'll also be selling the service of the truck. So the main factor is the convenience. We'll be coming to different stops around campus near you. Um, also, we're going to be selling our kind of unique, funky vibe. And at Case Bites, we decided that we should have two menus, and the first menu is the late night menu, which caters mostly to students who are up late studying, um, maybe they're returning from a late night out, and they're kind of craving that comfort food to satisfy um, their needs. And that menu will operate from 1 a.m. until 5 a.m. on Thursday nights through Sunday nights. And the main staples of this menu will be burgers, mac and cheese, chicken fingers, um, the typical fare that a drunk college student or a college student who is completely tired of studying would want to have on at night. Um, we'll also have our early morning menu, which will run from 7 a.m. until 11 a.m. And we're mainly doing this menu to focus in on the college students who have those early morning classes. So 8.30 class on the quad, you don't have time to get food before you run to class, but maybe you do have time to quickly stop by the truck and buy something before you actually head out. Um, and you can just grab something to go to eat in class. Um, so we focus mostly on portable items. So, you know, maybe a cup of oatmeal, maybe a bagel, maybe um, a muffin or like yogurt and granola. Um, we also decided to make this menu a lot healthier than our previous menu because we felt like a lot of college students actually do care about what they're eating and, you know, they typically try to make that effort to eat healthy. Um, so we thought it would appeal to a lot of our peers. Also, we'll be having uh, coffee offered both with the late night menu and the early morning menu. And it'll, we'll just have one type of house blend coffee um, and also decaf coffee available. And uh, we'll save on time and order efficiency by having like no specialization on those drinks. So you just order it and that's what you get. Um, we're also deciding to offer one specialty drink of the month and that will kind of capitalize on maybe a popular flavor. So in the fall, I'll have pumpkin spice latte. And this specialty drink, there'll only be one offered per month, and it will rotate every month. And we're planning on offering limited special or customization on this drink to save time and effort so that our employees aren't laboring on each person's drink. Um, this will mean that orders will be quickly processed, and it will have minimum wait time and also minimum employee input of labor. Finally, the Health Bites experience will be kind of a fun, funky vibe. Um, we're looking to create a campus icon that has that cool factor where students will want to visit it, talk about, oh, you know, oh yeah, I went and picked up some food there this morning. Um, just something that's very popular. And to do that, we're going to play off of the Case Western Reserve University nerd image. So our employees will be asked to dress up like nerds. Um, we're going to have, you know, the fake big chunky glasses. We're going to also have suspenders, um, maybe pocket protectors, to just kind of play off the image and create a funky, fun vibe that is unique to our truck and sets us apart from our competition. So financing is obviously a very important part of this project. From the get-go, we have a very obvious advantage as compared to a brick-and-mortar restaurant. To start a brick-and-mortar restaurant, you're looking at roughly 100 to upwards of a million dollars worth of uh, financing required to actually open the place. For us, a used food truck can have for as little as $30,000. However, a new one would run you roughly $100,000. And this comes with equipment and everything. The food truck will have several operating costs, the first one being gas. Uh, we figured, um, taking the loop into consideration, that we need roughly $50 w worth of gas a day. And this could go up or down depending on the weather because you need heating, wouldn't need heating, etc. The second operating expenditure is food. Um, 
food costs are pretty high right now and we'd be serving healthier ingredients so food costs will be even higher because of that and we're looking at roughly about five hundred dollars for food a day but it could be upwards of seven hundred dollars depending on business uh like on a weekend if we're really busy it's going to cost more the third is uh wear and tear items truck is going to have problems and it's going to need things replaced so we've set around set aside roughly um two hundred dollars a month for this However, if there are any major problems, the cost could be much higher, like a broken engine, broken exhaust, is obviously going to take a lot more money to fix. And then we have the employee salary, which is, which we are planning on hiring case employees, so where we would pay the case minimum wage. And we'd hire two people, one to drive, one to cook, and when the food truck is actually stopped, both employees would be cooking. They would be paid $223 a day for the hours that we're planning on being... Um, on running so our total startup cost is roughly about um, forty one forty thousand and one hundred dollars and our total roughly daily cost is roughly a thousand dollars a day after doing some research we figured out that a small restaurant typically makes about twenty five hundred dollars a day of profit before considering food costs so for us that would leave us with fifteen hundred dollars and if you take tax into account Let's say we're left with about a thousand dollars, a thousand to twelve hundred dollars. It will take us roughly sixty days, anywhere from fifty to sixty days, to clear our debt, and we would then be profiting off the actual food truck. So who are we? We are people who like to cook, who like to eat. We are students. We have friends in the university, including faculty. One of which is on the the faculty senate, uh, staff, and members of the administration, as well as our fellow students. Um, our group members have a range of skills, including computer engineering, finance, marketing management, and um, our token history major. Um, but you know, we recognize the gaps in our experience, and we'll be calling on other interested parties to fill those gaps. Um, three groups that we really feel should be represented on our advisory board or within the management itself is, um, as previously mentioned, a uh, management member of Bon Appetit, a member of the Faculty Senate, and a representative of the Student Executive Council. Um, these individuals bring many things to the table, um, including their own personal tastes and preferences for food but also their advice on execution of our plans. Bon Appetit has dominated the campus food market, but with their help, we can work together and possibly pool resources. Um, what threat could we pose to them as a small food truck operating at unoccupied hours? A member of the Faculty Senate would be helpful to keep us on track with the goals of the university so that we can keep in accordance with them and hopefully get a little bit of university funding. Um, finally, our SEC representative would be able to help us keep in tune with the desires of the students, um, the big events coming up, and to really help us spread the word to SEC member organizations. We believe that these resources will be a big help to us and will make our business that much better.